Although bees are not an endangered species, their numbers are dropping, and with their cruciality to our ecosystem, it must be understood how important they really are. It's not especially easy to tell the population of a small insect that move around quite seismically. A singular honeybee colony can compromise up to 80,000 individuals. And of all 270 bee species in the UK, only one of these is a honeybee species. Honeybee loss is easiest to track due to their close relationship with humans. In fact, over the past 10 years, up to 53% of colonies have been lost in Europe. This is likely from CCD, colony collapse disorder, which has led to beekeepers losing all of their bees. It's not a definitive reason why this happens, but multiple, from pesticide use to phone signals. Due to the close relationship between humans and honeybees, we, we rely so heavily on them whilst using practices that go against bee health, like migratory breeding, where bees are forcibly moved by trucks to different pollinating hotspots. This is a very easy way for diseases to spread between different colonies and between different spots. Some places that the bees go to are also not good for bee health. Genetic overbreeding. Queens have been genetically modified to create the ultimate honeybee. Very fertile, docile, easy to control workers, high productivity and low swarm likelihood. However, this has led to the loss of genetic diversity modelled in favour of productivity, that the ability to overcome problems is lost. Mega farming. Bees, like humans, like variety with their food. However, increased monoculture on large scales has led to unhealthy bees. N not only this, but it's hardly easy to be happy with giant combine harvesters chewing up and rumbling through your land. And pesticide spraying. The pesticide is taken up by the bees, as well as the plants. Humans' development to bees in breeding is to make disease-tolerant bees due to the new host of diseases domestication has brought. Scientists are doing development into the bacteria already present in a bee's gut to see what a bee can handle and deal with currently, and if there's any way to enhance its effectiveness. However, workers in queen's guts work differently, and therefore different research will have to be done for the different types of bees. Pollination services by bees are valued at over... 131,951,450,000 pounds, or simply $170 billion. And to make a simple pound of honey, it takes 10 million foraging trips. However, in this process, a huge range of flowers are pollinated. One kilogram of honey takes up to 145,000 kilometers of flying to produce. <laughs> and a single bee can visit up to 2,000 flowers a day. 75% of the world's top 100 crop species rely on bee pollination. Agriculture reliance on insect pollination has increased by 300% in the last 50 years, with crop yield enhancing by up to 75%, and 80% of insect crop pollination is by honeybees. This has become a more urban and suburban pastime as bees are finding it hard to forage in agricultural land. There are also a couple of advantages to this. Plant diversity flowering seasons that can cover the whole year with different plants coming in and out of season constantly. Structural diversity as there are different wider ranges of plant structures to explore. And finally, there's the cumulative difference in garden diversity. A significant amount of work and commitment is required to be a beekeeper, whether you start as a hobby hive or do commercial beekeeping. When you do hobby beekeeping, you'll typically have one to two hives. However, commercial hives are usually in the sum of 10 to 15 hives. With commercial, you have to have an ease of access to the hives with a fair distance from crowds of people. Hives are usually placed 8 to 10 feet away from the edge of a field upon bricks or pallets to allow air to flow and so that the ground doesn't make the bottom of the hive damp. This will also help the hive be flat as bees have a mental spirit level and can tell when the hive is wonky. <laughs> this will affect the honeycomb building and will make it wonky. Bees are also not too awfully fond of horses, so if you're beekeeping, make sure that it's a safe distance from horses. As much as a beekeeper can help with hive survival, it can also be... <laughs> I'm not taking that back. <laughs> the beekeeper's fault for the loss of queen in a hive. In the winter, beekeepers will also place insulation in the roof of the hive, as, as well as fondant to help them get through the cold winter. Aside from beekeeping, what can the average human do for bee conservation? Simply planting bee-friendly plants gives bees more of an opportunity for foraging. The earlier you plant them, the better you are at getting a wider range of bees, and try to have plants and flower all year round. For bees, other than honeybees, you can create little hotels for them made out of hollow bamboo sticks cut up in old drain pipes. And try not to remove deadwood as it provides a great nest for solitary bees. You can also join the conservation campaign. 
or volunteer in a conservation group helping plant new habitat. Due to our over-reliance on bee pollination, if it continues to decrease, we may have to rely on hand or even robot pollination because as we stand, we are at risk of crushing wild populations. To help with scientific research on bees, they use radar tagging to find out how bees navigate as it is a huge part of survival. This is being used to see the effect of pesticides and where the bees travel. However, this equipment needs to be improved as it is not good in obstructed areas. Robo bees are currently undergoing Harvard University. This will help lessen the burden of having to pollinate so many flowers. To bees helping to reverse the decline of natural pollutants, smart sensors will act as the bees' eyes and gyroscopes will help to allow the bee to hover. To help increase bees' pollination productivity, experiments were taken out on different land types and where it was previously thought to have species diverse corridors between pollination sites, we found that bees prefer just to go to their pollination sites without taking detours. There are two different ways of going about incorporating farming and natural wildlife habitat land sharing and land sparing. Land sharing is where farming land is on a smaller scale, wildlife friendly and typically abundant and scattered. Land sparing is where there is larger scales, less environmentally friendly farming, but on fewer sites. This means more habitat for wildlife, but the farms will be more environmentally detrimental. This planet in this country contain many different interesting features, especially in how it functions. The way species intermingle and work together or against one another reflects on everything around us and knowing how everything or most things or even just how a few or just some things work can make the world that little bit more satisfying to watch. Mm -hmm.